Hello and welcome to another edition of Teaching Gamers Games. In this edition we're looking at the newest expansion for the Quacks of Quedlingburg, which is the Alchemist expansion. Before I actually go into um, how you play this new expansion, I'm going to just quickly revisit some of the things that are in this expansion that you've probably already seen and what you might use them for. Um, so the quickest thing to look at is you're going to get some more of the Destiny cards. You get 20 of them, shuffle them in um, to your normal deck. They're a great addition. The only thing to look out for is if you've not got the Herbs, which is an expansion, you might not want to put those in with the, um, with the Witch's Hat because it won't work. The other thing in this expansion, which you've probably already seen, uh, first of all, it's the white firecracker tokens. Um, these ones are just to replace any of yours that are getting a little bit worn. Uh, I know certainly mine were getting getting worn just because I used them so much before I put them in the coin capsules. Um, and then the other thing that you've got is the loco weed, which is the green flowery tokens. If you've not seen these because you've not got the herbs, which expansion, because they did come in that... They're basically just another token that you um, can add to the game. They come with their own double-sided recipe books as well. And you can use them interchangeably. It's not like the others where you have to pick a particular chapter and stick to that one. Um, so yeah, it's just basically a new, more of the same that you've already seen, but a different coloured token. Okay, so now we're actually going to look how to play the expansion itself. So every player needs to take the same extension to the board as the colour cauldron they've got. So a yellow one in this case, and it slots... Over the board, above the board there you take the bubble token there and it just starts on the zero to begin with and then you'll need the four cards that have got the same colour flask on them as your cauldron and each of these refer to a particular patient type so vampirism there I'll have a card that says vampirism and it matches that particular character once all the players have got the board set up you want to take the eight tokens that are shown here, that are the patients that you're going to be treating throughout the game, and you're going to put these into one of the bags, or you're going to randomly pick three of them. So let's say, for instance, I chose these three for this particular game. You're going to then find the cards that relate to these three tokens. So that one, Vampirism there. There's a Carrot Nose. And finally nervousness after that these three tokens can go back in the game box as well as these characters because they're not going to be used during this game then once you've got your three patients players need to decide which of the three patients they're going to be treating throughout this game it doesn't matter which one you choose you can have the same one as somebody else all that you have to think about is which of the powers you'd like to utilize throughout the game some of the players uh, some of the patients sorry have a start of the game um, heading there which means that you have to put something in before the game even begins but typically the thing on these patient cards will be when you need to actually use their power so or where you can use the power I should say so this this character for instance um, you use his power during the preparation phase um, she's just for the preparation phase up here but down here, the vampirism is at the end of the essence phase, okay? And that's probably a new term that you've not heard yet, so I'll come to that now. Now, you might not have heard preparation phase before, because in the base game, it was referred to as the potion phase, which is the bit where you put in the tokens into your cauldron. But in the herb, which is expansion, and this expansion, it's referred to as the preparation phase, so after you do that bit where you put the tokens in the cauldron you move up to this essence phase and the way the essence phase works it is highlighted there just to remind you so the first thing you're going to look for is how many different colored tokens apart from the white ones are actually in your cauldron and you're going to score that many points to start with so looking at my board that I've set up here I've got two yellow ones so that's one type of color two three with a blue, four with a green, and the local weed makes five. So I've got five different types of tokens, not including the white. That's five points straight away to start with. Then you look at your white tokens. Do they add up to exactly seven? In this instance, I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they do. That's another point. And then the very last thing to consider, did your neighbours 
explode. In a two-player game, you can only count that neighbour once, so you can only ever get one point if they exploded, but in a three or more, both of your neighbours, let's say both of mine exploded, that's a point per neighbour. Then after you've got the score for the essence phase, you're going to look at the related flask that your bubble counter is pointing at. Some of the flasks are oval and some of the flasks are circular. The difference between the two are the circular ones are activated immediately and then you might still be able to utilise the points that are left using the patient's power. In this one, it's an oval one, so that means you have to refer back to the patient's reference card to understand what you're going to get. So I've got 10, and we know that's money if you do know the game, it's 10. Refer back to the patient power, it says at the end of the essence phase, I can buy an additional chip for the value gain. So I basically just buy a 10 value chip in this instance. But I do want to show you another character, the carrot nose character. Because as you can see on his card, they're all circular. Now that doesn't mean that's the only thing you're going to get from Carrot Nose. It means that's the first thing you're going to get, the circular reward. So the first thing is, I'm going to get a point for being here. And then, I'm going to be able to use that and spend the essence that I've made there. Look into at his character sheet. In the preparation phase, or the potion phase, when you're putting things in your cauldron... I can reduce that essence by two spaces to get the reward shown. So effectively you're going to keep that on that number during the next part of the game, spending it. After the potion phase, this goes back to zero anyway. So it's worthwhile doing, it's worthwhile spending it if you can to get the reward shown. The very last thing that you need to consider is the final round of the game because you ignore the card completely, you don't get any of the rewards, you don't get the bonus points, you don't get the rat's tails, you don't get to use anything in the next round because there's not going to be a next round. All that you do in this final round is whatever your number you land on, which is 8 in this case, that's how many additional points you get for end game scoring. So just remember that last round, you completely ignore that card, you might as well take it away just to remind you during the last round, and you only get the points shown. And that's how you play the Alchemist expansion for Quacks of Quedlinburg. See you again next time. Mm -hmm.